Papa, we want to thank you for your presence in this place. Lord, we thank you for that, that anointing mantle that is over us, Lord, in this season. I want to thank you, Holy Spirit, that you are on the increase. You are stirring things all over again. And you're stirring our hearts for a hunger for more of you. And I pray, Lord, that uh, even now, this, today and this week, that we just step into a greater measure of our destiny and our relevance for being alive today. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So I, I just want to title this morning... Uh, Signs of the times. Um, and we, we, we often speak about understanding the signs of the times, and we've referred to the, the sons of Issachar who understood the signs of the times, but they also knew how to instruct the people according to the signs of the times. Amen? And so um, we often hear that quoted that we are a people who are supposed to know what is happening at this time. But if you turn with me to Matthew 16... And I'm going to read from verse 1, and, and I, I, I've just got a short word today, because I just want to have a little practical time. I know time's running out, but um, that's okay. We do things differently here. Yes. From verse 1, uh, chapter 16 in Matthew. The Pharisees and Sadducees came to Jesus and tested him by asking him to show them a sign from heaven. He replied, when evening comes, you say, it'll be fair weather, for the sky is red. And in the morning, today, it'll be stormy, for the sky is red and overcast. You know how to interpret the appearance of the sky, but you cannot interpret the signs of the times. A wicked and adulterous generation looks for a miraculous sign, but none will be given it except the sign of Jonah. Jesus then left them and went away. It's interesting there that Jesus, um, when he speaks about them not understanding the signs of the times, he brings up an illustration of understanding the climate, the patterns, the, the climate patterns. And you know, it's, it's like when we, can understand, um, when we can understand when God's doing a new thing, it changes the pattern of our walk, isn't it? Understanding changes the pattern. And so, if only they could interpret the, the spiritual pattern that was changing at the time in the same way as they were able to understand the changing patterns and weather, everything would have been very, very much different. Amen? I mean, the problem is that sometimes we don't want to see the change. Sometimes we don't want to see what God is doing spiritually because it's going to call for a greater measure of our commitment, and it might call us right out of our comfort zone. Amen? Amen. You see, when we start to understand then when there's pattern changes, it also means that there's a there needs to be a change coming in our life. Amen? And so, um, and so in the same way Jesus says to them, here um, you can understand the natural changes that are taking place, but you're totally missing what God's doing in the spirit, here in relation to himself, here in, to, in the relation to Jesus. And it's all about Jesus. Amen. When he's referring to the signs of the times, he's referring to himself. To understand the signs of the times is to understand Jesus. Because he's referring to himself. And, and so right in front of them, right before them, and all the scriptures that they studied off off by heart on all the uh, prophecies about the, the coming of the Messiah, the Messianic uh, scriptures and prophecies is standing right before them and they don't see it. And they completely miss the complete climate change at this point in time, spiritually. And so Jesus refers to them about, uh, and he brings up an illustration about Jonah. Now, Jonah was the prophet that was sent to the Gentiles um, at a time when Israel 
was in a mess in terms of their uh, relationship with God. So he sends in this time Jonah to Nineveh. And um, there is a type and shadow here of the coming days of the coming gospel here in the life of Jonah. The way Jonah was sent to a Gentile nation to bring about a turn of heart, a repentance in the people that would actually provoke Israel to jealousy. That was the purpose. And it's a shadow and type of what is to come in the life of Jesus and our walk in terms of the gospel of the Lord. Here Jonah was um, in the, for three days, death, burial, and resurrection. And it's interesting how he refers to, um, says, except the sign of Jonah. And if only they would understand, even understand that sign. Jesus is the sign. Jesus is the sign. And he points to the eternal purposes or the eternal purpose of God at this t- um, in our life. The Word, the Holy Spirit, and Jesus are all working together to bring about the purpose of God in our life. The eternal purpose of God in our life. It's all working together. This is the gospel. The testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. The manifestation, the sign of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Amen? He is the sign. To recognize what God is doing, to recognize what Jesus is up to, is, the, is understanding the signs of the times. And to know the signs of the times, we need to ask ourselves two questions. And the two questions we need to ask ourselves is, um, what is Jesus up to? And where is Jesus going? You see, we miss it when we try to interpret the signs of the times. What we do is we, we miss it by saying, ah, oh, there's earthquakes, there's rumors of wars and wars and so forth. The, 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 the moon is turning to blood. Yes, these are signs. But what we need to understand that Jesus is the sign. Amen. And to know Jesus is to understand the signs of the times. To know what Jesus is up to is to understand the signs of the times. And these are the two questions that we need to be asking ourselves right now in our life. Is what is Jesus up to and where is Jesus going? If I can have the Lord answer those two questions in my life, I understand the signs of the times. See, I don't need to look outside of Jesus. I don't need to look outside of my relationship with him because it's calling me to a deeper relationship with him. And so what I need to do is learn in my own life to understand the signs of the times. Amen? You see, otherwise we're aimless. I need to ask myself in my own life right now, in my circumstances, the things that are going around me, where is Jesus and what is he up to? What is Jesus doing and where is he going? Amen? I need to ask myself those questions in my life. And then I can start stepping into it. See, the worst blindness Jesus refers to, the worst blindness was the blindness of the Pharisees. And if we are not asking ourselves the question, if we are not recognizing Jesus in our circumstances, then what are we? Religious. Then we are just religious. We are performing religious rituals. We are going about the motions. We have a form of godliness, but deny the power thereof. If we are not understanding what Jesus is up to in my life and where he's going, and if I'm not stepping into that, I'm just religious. Do you understand? And so this morning... What I want to do in terms of a practical time, and I just felt like I just wanted to share those, just those thoughts with us, is I want to ask, I want to give people an opportunity here this morning that who have, who have heard the Lord about certain things in their life. They've asked God questions and they've heard the Lord, but they're needing confirmation. Now, who knows how important that is? It's a lot of times you hear the Lord, but when you get the confirmation, it helps you step into something. 